everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we haven't met before, I'm so glad that you're here. And today I'm going to be telling you how I Instagram. I am a proud member of the Instagram plant community, and I'm sure that many of you already are or want to be if you're watching this video. So I'm going to be talking about four things today in this video. One, how I take my Instagram photos. Two, how I edit them three, how I plan out my feed, and four, how I have found growth on Instagram. So yeah, let's just get right into it, starting with how I take the photos for my Instagram page. Okay, so looking at my feed as a whole, it is basically just a mumble jumbo. Is that a thing? Mumbo jumbo? I don't know. It's a myriad of photos from my house of my plants. I don't have a sequence of posting. I don't have you know, all white backgrounds. I take photos of my plants pretty much exactly where they are. Sometimes I'll hold them up against a wall and um, take a photo this way. My favorite place to do that is actually in my bathroom because it's the only white surface in my house. So what I use to take the photos, I actually use my camera for filming videos and also for taking photos of my plants. And the camera that I have is a Canon EOS M3. It's a little mirrorless DSLR and I bought it from someone off of Craigslist for like 200 bucks and I'm still shocked that that happened but yeah it was a really great deal and I really love this camera it doesn't do super well in low light situations which I've learned um, but I only shoot in auto as of right now I have taken a few photos in manual and I really liked the way that they looked like a lot more than other photos so hopefully I will get better at that um, with time. So when I'm taking the photos, I am very mindful of the lighting in the area, especially knowing that my camera doesn't do super hot in low light situations. Um, so basically I have only east and west facing windows in this house. So in the mornings, I'm taking photos of my plants in the east windows so that there's plenty of light. And then in the evenings, I'm taking photos of my plants in the west windows so that there's plenty of light. Um, I think that plants look the best when there is light on them and when it's bright in the room and that helps cut down a lot of editing later on. Sometimes if I take a photo and it's too dark and I'm trying to bring up the brightness, the quality of the photo goes down so much and it's really sad and I can't even use the photo. So I've learned to really only take photos when the plants are in their brightest um, time of the day and it just turns out a lot better for me. I think that it's extremely important if you want to grow on Instagram to have a beautiful feed. And I think a part of that is really, really great photos. Obviously, actually, the entire part of that is really beautiful photos. And you don't have to have super rare, crazy plants to have a cool feed. I think that you just need to have quality photos. And you can achieve that on your smartphone, and you definitely can achieve that on a camera, whatever you have. If you've seen my feed, I have a variety of close-up detail shots and far away um, area shots. I don't know what to call them, but basically it just shows like the aesthetic of my house and plants that are together in groupings. Okay, so once all the photos are taken, it's time to edit them. Two apps that I use to edit my photos is the Lightroom app. Love Lightroom, I love the Adobe programs. Um, and I also actually use the Instagram app most of the time. I use the Instagram app more than anything, honestly, um, because I just really enjoy the way that it edits photos. It's super, super easy to use. Sometimes Lightroom can be confusing with all of the options that you have, um, but Instagram keeps it really simple. So on the screen, I'm going to show you how I edit my photos in the Instagram app. The look that I go for when I'm editing photos is really, really minimal. Like I just want the photos to look exactly how the plant looks when I'm looking at it right here. I'm looking at a plant right now. <laughs> so basically what I do is I increase the brightness considerably because sometimes my photos can be pretty dark even if they are in a bright room and sometimes when I bring the brightness up it causes a lot of blowout in other parts of the photo that are not the plant itself and so I scroll over to the highlights and then I bring down the highlights sometimes I bring up the shadows depending on how I'm feeling but the other thing that I usually mess with is the structure structure basically changes how um, hard the lines are on the photos. So if there are details in the leaves, it really brings out those details. Um, or if there's details in the terracotta, it brings that out as well. Um, so I will usually bring up the structure just a little bit so that the photo doesn't look blurry. 
Another thing that I'll do is mess with the saturation. So depending on how high I bring up the exposure, it will change the saturation of the photo and the plant might not look as green as it normally is um, or something like that. So I'll bring up the saturation ever so slightly, never a lot because I want the plant to look natural um, and I never edit a plant to look different than it actually does. So yeah, basically the formula for any photo that I'm editing is brightness, highlights, structure, and saturation. Um, I sometimes play with shadows, I think I already said that, um, if I'm looking for like a really shadowy photo, a little bit more dramatic, I don't know. Uh, I like to take advantage of the properties of the photo already, so if it is kind of a shadowy photo and I like the way that looks, I can keep that in there or I can take it out if I want. The Instagram editing section is actually really great, there's a lot on there. Okay, so when it comes to planning my feed, like I said at the very beginning of this video, I don't have a plan, I don't have rules for myself, um, but what I do for planning my feed, I load up all the photos, I edit them, and I save them as drafts to my Instagram page. So basically how you do that, you probably saw in the editing clips, but you edit all you want and then you... I think that if you edit the photo, it'll automatically give you the option to save it as a draft if you don't put a caption or a location. I usually have between 0 and 40 photos in my drafts and that's just because I like to have a lot of content available to me just in case I'm not able to take a photo in the moment. So I just take a lot of photos at once, like probably 50. And so there are some photos that I edit, I do all of this work and then I never actually post it because after it's been in my drafts for a while, I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't really like that photo that much. And when you have a lot of photos in your drafts, you can also see how they look together. Like I said, I don't really care how they look together, but also I want to know that they don't look bad together. So <laughs> it usually just gives me an opportunity to see what they look like clustered together on a grid. Okay, and the last thing that I want to talk about, if you're still around, thank you so much. I want to talk about growing on Instagram, especially in the plant community. I've been on Plantstagram for a year, yeah, a year and some change. I just had my anniversary post. Um, so it's been about a year and in that time, my account has grown significantly, way more than I ever thought it would. And this isn't to say that I have like the biggest Instagram page in the Instagram community because that is so far from the truth. Uh, but I do think that I have experienced some growth recently and I would love to share how I've done it and how I think the best way to go about Instagram is, especially in the plant community. So first of all, I started experiencing a lot of growth on my Instagram account when I started interacting a lot more with people in my community. I don't think that that is at all a coincidence. Instagram is probably more likely to share your account with other people if it is an active account. And so I started commenting on people's stuff, liking their photos. When people would write stuff to me, like in a DM or in a comment, I always reply, even now. I mean, it's not like I get like hundreds of thousands of messages and comments but I always make a point to reply to every single comment. Even if it's just emojis, I'll at least like the comment. Um, but interacting with people who interact with you back is incredibly huge <laughs> for like making friends and for growing on your Instagram page because once Instagram realizes that you're being active, I think that they're like, oh, let's promote this account. And so once I started doing that, the growth was crazy fast. Um, posting consistently is another really great way to grow if you're posting something new every single day people are more likely to find you and also making sure that what you do post is a quality piece of work it's a quality photo because you can post a million really bad photos and not get anywhere because I don't know people want to look at beautiful photos right when I started to be more personal with my Plantstagram page a lot of people were more responsive to things that I was posting because instead of me like offering advice all the time in my captions, I would talk about my daily life, and people were like, hey, that's really awesome you're doing that. Also, nice plant. <laughs> I don't know, I thought that was really, really cool, because actually, I love when people on Instagram, especially when it's like a hobby account, talk about their personal lives too, because we are not an isolated person. Like, when I'm on my plant Instagram, I'm not just Becca De La Plants, like, I'm still who I am as a person, like I still have all these feelings and thoughts and experiences, and I think it's just a really great thing to share those things as well. Obviously not saying we should <laughs> tell our deepest, darkest secrets on our plant Instagram account, but just incorporating your life on a daily basis in it as well I think is a really awesome thing. You know what, also I think it's just important to not get discouraged if your profile is not getting super big or it's 
growing slowly. It's great to have a lot of profiles that follow you on Instagram. When you have a bigger plant community, you have access to a lot more knowledge and a lot more people who are willing to help you, um, a lot more resources, but it's even better to have real friendships with some of those people. Like, I think that I have 4,000 something Instagram followers, but there's probably 10 people in the entire community that I talk to on a daily basis. Maybe not daily, but like weekly basis. And so those are my friends in the community. And I think that's super, super important to prioritize that over having a lot of followers. Actually having a conversation with somebody and connecting with somebody and meeting them in person and making a real relationship is so much, it's so much healthier, it's so much stronger of a bond. You guys will never guess what just happened. My camera died. It's so classic me. It's insane. <laughs> I really am back on YouTube now if my camera died randomly in the middle of a video. Um, but I did say everything that I wanted to say, so I guess now is a good time to end the video and let you go. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions about Instagram, editing photos, taking photos, whatever it may be, leave them down in the comments below. And tell me what you've been up to for the last two and a half weeks, because it's been a while since I've seen you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!